That's funny you say that. So, uh, yeah, we're ready to rock. Um, Joe Rogan stuff used to be live. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. Yeah, and the mistakes they had there. And they even had, like, people clipping it. Like, As they go. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. must have been tough work. Oh, Jesus. But sorry, I um, just want to give everybody a little intro. So I just want to welcome Jake from Mechanical Flood Protections. So before I get, we get too deep into it, sometimes I forget to introduce yeah, the no, guests. Yeah, that's okay. So, that's okay. So, yeah, just... Uh, Let's reel it back a little bit there. I apologize for the uh, little interruption there. But, uh, yeah, let's get into kind of like uh, you're talking a little bit about CRMs and, you know, getting one going and, uh, you know, not knowing what one was. And <laughs> to be quite honest, it was quite a while working for Unilever until I even heard about a CRM. Right. And to be quite frank, we didn't even have one. Like, we didn't. Oh, really? Use, yeah, it was. It was um, looking back, it was kind of. You know, we did the best we could, but it was kind of, for a company the size they were, it was kind of Mickey Mouse, like. Yeah, it's it's dangerous. Like, I've missed so many scheduled appointments and uh, and dealing with customers who called and forgetting to call yeah. them back and stuff like that. And uh, it's a terrible experience for the customer, especially, right? So, yeah. so we're doing we're doing the CRMs now, and uh, or a CRM, rather. And uh, we're also integrating a lot of uh, media. So we're, yeah. we have a, like a professional videographer. Yeah, I love um, that, the videos, man. Oh, yeah. Like, they're, they're going to be a lot uh, more... Yeah, like there could be like a little bit more commercial grade stuff out there, but I kind of mm. like the real intimate, you know, hey, here's what I'm doing today kind of stuff. But I we're, love that. We're putting that out pretty much every single day and we're trying to ramp up our numbers. So, yeah, man. Yeah. Do you have like a schedule? Are you set on doing like two or three a, a week or are you trying to do one every day? Or what's Well, your... like back to Hermosi when we were talking about him, like he does like something like 300 pieces of content a week. Okay. Now what's <laughs> man? And it's like Alex Hermosi probably sitting here listening to me ask this question and be like, well, "You're just lazy or something." Like, yeah. To me, that is almost like the umpteenth degree of insanity. Yeah, pretty well, yeah, yeah. But it's what's necessary if you want to be great. You know, what I mean, yeah. according to him, like in his book, uh, Hundred Billion Dollar Leads," the first page says, "Do more." That's it. Yeah, right? man. I know. I read <laughs> both books, and it was like I've been reading them. I was like, holy. Like I thought I was doing quite a bit, but apparently <laughs> me too. I'm, I'm not the doing same way. a lot. Yeah, it was brutal. Like, uh, uh, so we we don't have that kind of number, that's for sure. No, like, me but neither. we're we're figuring out like how to try and not be boring because anybody could put out three three hundred pieces of content a week if they just take a video of them putting their shoes on. Yeah, but you know, like <laughs> you, I know, but you know what? I think everybody's so focused and and. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I just I I think I've I caught wind of this in a few of the like, you know, like um, I forget Rico and like some of those like influencer guys. Like I think we were so focused on making everything so captivating and and and, and switch to this slide and then this um, you know emoji or or picture in inlaid. Like I think there's something to be said for. Um, just natural uncut content too. Yeah. That, that's informational and, and still drives the message home. And I think Alex was talking about it a little bit recently where he said a lot of his content now is just like raw. Like he doesn't do a lot of editing. I personally don't do a ton of cuts or edits in the podcast unless there's specific stuff that people don't want in it, mm -hmm. which obviously I respect. Um, But yeah, often my reels, like, you know, I just cut out the tidbits and, you know, back to the, the time thing, it's like, I got a lot of other things to do. So I try <laughs> to do the best product I can that highlights my guest and what we're talking about or some key points to try and get people to the long format. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I mean, maybe I'm just not that kind of creator, I guess, because I watch other people like a uh, Cash Alevi, a uh, guy from Remax Hallmark, big time realtor out in toronto he does amazing content like they're almost skits mm -hmm. and they're so creative and he's so he's such a good actor too yeah yeah but i'm like man i don't even know where to start well it depends on what you want to do too like what do you want to get across to your audience like, right like it for me it's more like hey like i want to remind you that there's a solution to your flooding problem mm. that's my that's my goal okay because like alex is saying what's the number one thing you could do if you wanted to destroy your business the fastest Right. Right. The number one thing was to be tell nobody about your stuff. I right? know. He's like, don't tell anybody. 
that well, you do this. It's funny so. you say that because I thought coming in, you know, working for Unilever eight and a half, almost nine years as the district guy, well, guess what? Yeah, I was the district sales manager, but the amount of selling I really did was pretty minimal unless I was going to re-sign a corporate account, do mm-hmm. a contract. Um, like the day-to-day stuff, yeah, I was more putting out fires because the, the funnels and everything are already made for you. So they knew like, Oh, we, so my, my business was uh, to manage their ice cream portfolio in Atlantic Canada. So like specifically in gas convenience, right? (laughs) Ben and Jerry's Klondike Magnum pop school, you know, the summertime weather stuff. Yeah. And if you go to the Wilson's gas or circle K or Ultramar or whatever, and you see the red briars freezer cabinet, well, they knew who to call. They'd look up in the directory. Oh, we'll call Chris. We'll get a cabinet. Boom. So when I got into real estate, I was like, Oh, I'll just like change my Facebook status to chris kroll realtor and everybody will just i know right yeah no well same thing with me like we had uh like i mentioned earlier we did a plumbing our plumbing business um for renovation plumbing that's our specialty Mm -hmm. um for almost 10 years and then we specialized last year into mechanical flood protection after the big storms we had right and uh uh so I figured, oh, great. We have this like real problem. I can solve it mm-hmm. for a lot of people, right? Not everybody, but for a lot of people. And I figured just having the name, doing some, you know, whatever legwork would, would bring in, you know, customers. But right. no, you have to educate people that your solution will work, number one, right? So most of my content is education. I want it to be like edutainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like it's mostly education. And, I try and uh, get to that too. But yeah. like I said, I'm not like the not quite there yet right right and like like so educating people that there is a solution how it works mm. um and uh and that doesn't have to cost a ton of money right and it can be done in a day like we have to get this point across and that's all well and good but people may not trust you right how do you build that trust? gotta build the trust right mm. so consistency and cadence in your in your social media is key for that that's why i want to put out quite a bit of content regularly so that people can see that other people in their community are solving the problem using our service. Yeah, man. So, yeah, trust me, it's a grind, but you know, when I started this, it was more along the lines of getting in front of people that do cool stuff Mm -hmm. and and hearing the story and sharing it out. Um, And then obviously the educational reels of like the buying and the selling, you know, ups and downs of real estate, what to do, what not to do, what to look for. For a long time, nobody watched any of it. Like very low. It was very demoralizing. It was very slow. Mm -hmm. And it literally took until two thirds of the way, I say half, but probably two thirds of the way to 2023 into almost into 2024 before it started to hook on. Right on. But it did. And it did. That's the key, right? DM. Yeah. Hey, looks like you know what's up. Yeah. Let's chat, need to buy a house yeah. or need to sell one. Or, you know, maybe they seen a podcast and like maybe they want to contact to a, one of my guests, which is also still great because I think I mentioned it in an episode before. I When I first thought about this, I wasn't even in real estate. I just thought it'd be a cool thing. Mm-hmm. And I have a pretty big network. So I thought about like calling it the, the referral network. Right. And then I kind of bought all the stuff and things changed and, ha- you know, life happened. And it was just sitting in my closet for the longest time. <laughs> But yeah, it's like that, like you say, consistency and just, you got to keep going. Yeah. Because there's like, there's there's two people in this world. This is, And I forget what book I read it in. But anyway, it doesn't matter. There's two types of people in this world. It's people that believe they can and people that believe they can't. Mm-hmm. And they're both right. You just got to believe, you just got to decide which one you want to be. And then you got to just go. Yeah. And like in business, you only really lose when you quit. That's it. Right. Like if, if you haven't won and you're still working on winning, whatever that means to you. Right. Like, like you're always going to have an option to get or a chance. I mean, to say to get there mm. unless you quit. Yeah, man. I think uh, so. one of the adages we use at jujitsu, which I think fits just in life in general, jujitsu is super hard. And the same thing with content creation and building a brand on social media. To get any level in jujitsu, you're going to take some beatings. Now, not like your your training partners aren't maliciously beating you up, but it's a combative type sport. It's tough. Like Mm -hmm. better people are going to, you know, win. And the thing that we try and and teach, and and one thing that I try and kind of give out 
especially when, you know, you're sitting on the, on the sidelines, maybe taking a round off and, you know, there's a guy, maybe a white belt or a blue belt. I'm a third degree purple belt. You know, you can kind of tell maybe they kind of got the, you know, they really didn't perform like they wanted to. And they kind of are, you can tell that there's disappointment. And one thing we say is in jujitsu, if you don't win, you learn. And that's just why, how I look at failure. Mm -hmm. People think it's game over, all done, pack it up. Sure, if you want it to be the end, quit. Yeah, no, I, I, I wanted to say quickly that third degree uh, purple belt sounds pretty cool. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about the belt system, obviously. But, yeah, yeah. But. So uh, I guess just for uh, maybe other people don't. So in jujitsu, um, dissimilar to other martial arts disciplines, it goes white. Uh, and then on every belt, technically there's four degrees, so the people call them stripes. It's just literally like there's a piece of black chunk on your on your belt, and then they put like white pieces of tape. And then when, once you get to the fourth degree, technically it's to the next level. So it goes white, four degrees, blue, purple, brown, black. So uh, anyway, hopefully my buddy, my coach isn't watching. But I think maybe this year sometimes I might get promoted to brown belt, but uh, I tend not to voice those opinions because – I don't want to feel like I sound like I, I'm i like uh, deserving of it. I right. think I'm deserving. I just want things that are earned. Yes, oh, of course. And that's what yeah. I love about the belt system too. I'm sure there's some uh, dojos and other you know institutions that don't really follow a good protocol for belt elevation. Yeah, some but, of it is very commercialized. Yeah. Like it's money. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. You know, uh, our gym, although they're very good at, at you know, uh, commending your progression. Um, they're not like a belt factory. Like you Good. Know, people that want like just to get promoted to say they have it. Cause guess what? If you go to a gym and you just run the ranks and get the purple belt and you run into me at a tournament, I'm going to eat you a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the reality too. Right. It's not doing anybody any favors. I don't want to walk on the mats and not be to the level I'm supposed to be. Yeah. It's like stolen valor almost. You know? Right. <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's like, um, yeah, it's just not real. No, and like, I I like that hard work thing and not quitting. Like that, like you said, right? It's like it, it pairs with business so well. Yeah, if you don't win, you learn. Yeah, and like I get a, a lot of time. I hear people, uh, or not a lot of time. I shouldn't say it like that. Some of my friends have mentioned to me I should be focusing on like a work life balance kind of thing, and and I don't agree with that myself personally, right? But I think it's very like chaotic. You know, each person's different with that. Oh yeah. So like, I love what I do so much Good. because I've done plumbing before um, in all different kinds of facets. And now I love this uh, specialty so much. I really enjoy the task mm -hmm. and I enjoy the process. And so we're having fun. Jackie, my wife and I, we're having fun. My son, he's got a business shirt. We've got many business shirts and we uh, got business hats with him. He helped us out at the home shows. I'll have to buy some shirts and hats from you. Yeah, no, they're just free. It's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I like uh, to support my, the people no, I know and the brands and stuff. I appreciate that yeah. very much. But like, um, it's a family thing, right? And my in-laws, uh, Jackie's parents, um, they, uh, you know, they're supportive of it too. And my parents are supportive of it too. Of it too. And like, mm -hmm. like it's, it's cool. You'll see a lot of my likes and comments are from my family. Right. Which is nice. Yeah. So That's awesome. what work life balance, it's just my life, right? My life is, my work is a part of my life. So. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you have Alex Hermosi say it, you hear multiple different, uh, business influencers like, you know, Mark Cuban, uh, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, you think they have balance? Hmm. You know, at some points, it's important. Like, you know, if you're not present with your wife and your kid and you're totally neglecting them and it's just all about you and the business and the money, probably not healthy. But if you're driven and you like what you do and love what you do and it's fun, which how many people can say what they love and have fun at what they do? Right. You know, um, there's going to be some imbalance periods to get to that place. Mm -hmm. Like I'm sure at the startup, you know, there was much less balance than there is today. Right. Now right. mind you, this is like a different kind of pressure where your, your balance or lack of balance is coming from you've grew your business and you're so busy that you have all these leads and, and customers to, to service uh, versus grinding and getting that business at the start. So it's like you get no balance here. Maybe you got a little bit in the middle and then now you're, you're, you know, you're like you say, you got to set up your CRM. You don't want to you miss appointments. You want to keep on top of things. And that creates real stress too. It does. Now I'm not happy anymore. Right. I don't right. want it to ever get to that point. So we're yeah. trying to follow a plan. We have a business coach. 
Mm. And uh, his name is Ashley. He's fantastic. And so he uh, uh, helps us get through the growing pains, right? Because that's what happens. If you have a really good product, like in our case, our product is is good. I know it is. People are buying yeah. it and we're installing them pretty well every day. And uh, and so we know we've got a good product. And uh, um, so eventually with the right steps, it will blow up to a point where I don't like it anymore because I'm getting too many calls and I'm not, I'm not I'm making mistakes, you know, let's yeah. just say, right? So it's very important that we have a, a very clear path that we're going to follow uh, beforehand mm-hmm. right and um, um, because like as long as things are are systemized and and the customers are being treated properly and and the job's getting done then the happiness keeps going yeah man you got to keep that happiness ball rolling 100 percent. so i know we've talked a little bit uh coffee and stuff um you mentioned here today that you used to be a plumber mm-hmm. um and i believe if i recall correctly you're originally from ontario yep that's right so i guess my question to you is like what what kind of led you here to Nova Scotia? Um, when in your experience in, as a plumber, did you see the opportunity to get in to the business you are in today? Okay. Well, from Ontario, like Jackie and I are both from Southern Ontario. Uh, we lived in a town called Fort Erie. Okay. And it's a border town with Buffalo. Yeah. And um, we, uh, you know, being tradespeople, we have didn't have a lot of money for vacations and stuff like that. So we did a lot of road trips yep. um, together. And uh, I had been out here once when I was 19. So probably like, I can't do the math right now. What is that? Six. Oh my God. 16 years ago, 17 yeah, years ago yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, I came out here once um, before I met Jackie and uh, I wanted to come back out again. Nice. And Jackie's big into the ocean, right? Sea life and diving and all that kind of stuff. She loves it. So yeah, 20 um, minutes away. From you know me. what I mean? Yeah. So we went <laughs> right know? beeline right from Southern Ontario, Ontario to uh, the Cabot Trail. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I that was her first experience in Nova Scotia, right? It's a cool experience. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. But it was great. It was amazing. So we did that six more times over the years, <laughs> like just coming back out for vacation. Oh, that's cool. And um, I'm sure you're, as a real estate agent, you're very acutely familiar with the market in Ontario. Mm-hmm. It exploded in the last five, six years. It has. Right? Yeah. And so we, uh, you know, being exhausted from running my plumbing company um, there, and uh, my son, Jake, was just born. Mm-hmm. At this time, we decided to pack up, sell, and come out here. So that brought us out here, right? And um, uh, working as a plumber in Ontario, I still am a licensed plumber. I like to flash that around a lot, even though some pumps don't require a plumbing license. Mm-hmm. Um, we uh, we saw a real problem. We've been looking for a problem, right? Like looking for what the market here in Nova Scotia needs for me and my services. Right. They don't necessarily need another, like renovation plumber. Yeah. Right. Or they don't need a building plumber. So I figured, you know, I'm going to solve, like, I think there's a water problem, like a uh, water treatment issue or, um, or something like that, that I could help that could be simple enough that I could scale it. Right. And solve the problem for a lot of people, hopefully Atlantic Canada eventually. Yeah. So, man. yeah expand. <laughs> but, so we, uh, we had this flood and the flood just told me like the flood last year didn't actually speak to me, but, uh, but I learned from my experience with the flood and how lack of, uh, inf- or the lack of infrastructure to help people mm-hmm. that there's my opportunity. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm 36 now and I've got to kind of figure it out, get, get going with what I'm going to do. So I said, you know what, I'm going to do this. And I specialized in it. And since then I've uh, parted ways, um, uh, with my contractors I worked for doing plumbing and have completely moved my business from that holistic plumbing to just this one specialized uh some system installation for people that's super cool man can you bring us through like your product and and maybe just like a what it is how it functions and and the benefit it provides to your customers and and maybe any you know service guarantees or, or or anything that you provide the customer in terms of like reassurance for your product and services yeah oh for sure like the uh so most people know what a sump pump is yep it evacuates the water underneath your concrete floor in your basement most okay. people in nova scotia have one yeah most people in nova scotia had to put it in themselves i've noticed ah. so buckets like five gallon home depot buckets in the ground and laundry baskets i've seen to just a hole in the floor yeah right just the perforated yeah yeah so like the problem that they have and the lack of trust i think in a sump system is that theirs currently doesn't work Right. So yeah, incorrectly installed. Exactly. So I have to um, make sure that I let everybody know how it's supposed to be installed first before they you know decide to buy. Um, but what we do is we install a standard sump basin. Okay. It's basically like a large like pail. It's 24 mm-hmm. inches in diameter, 24 inches deep, 
perforate it, we install it in like a non-intrusive area in somebody's home, like a mechanical room. Right. Right? Yeah. And the holes in it or perforations, we surround with clear stone that we bring in. Right? That way we can create a path of least resistance for all of the groundwater below the floor to find its way to our basin, significantly lower than the floor. You know, not just six, eight inches, we're talking two feet. Right. Right? And then we pump it out. Easy enough. People do this. It's not It's not that uncommon. Plumbers can do it. There's some waterproofing companies who provide that service too. Now, what separates us from everybody else is that we have a battery backup pump that will last for eight days with no power. Amazing. Which is amazing, right? Like that's, Yeah, because what, what about if you're non-inclusive in Mexico? That's the thing. seven to ten days. And you days? know what? I've, <laughs> I've actually said that a couple of times when talking to people about it at the home shows. Um, but like a generator won't last that long unless you've got three or four bottles of propane or you got and somebody's like, got to fill it you know what i mean like it's it's or like the, if the oil sensor goes on the generator it shuts off Done. and you don't know so like i think that that's all well and fine for the lighting and your, you know whatever in your home uh maybe more like uh, comfort things but for your water problem right you should have something specialized exactly to take care of that problem on its own not a generator issue or generator reliance so that's the one thing eight days no power and if you have like a ridiculously high water table right and it's just running non-stop i like to tell people it'll last in a pump eight thousand gallons in a single charge which is right from the manufacturer to put that in perspective 1200 square foot house it's a couple feet of water right wow it's a lot it's a lot of water so that's the one thing the second thing that separates us from everybody else is that our system keeps in touch with you Ah. right through a wi-fi monitor It's very simple. It's not very complicated. It's a free application. There's no ads, right? And what you get for that application is, you know, the power is on, you know, the water level is good in the basement, you know, the pump and the battery are in good shape, like just really pertinent stuff, right? So that way, while you're not home, you know how some system is performing anywhere with a data connection. So those two things separate us from everybody else. And that's why we can provide not just a guarantee, but a money back guarantee, Okay, so if if you flood from this after we put our system in from the method we prevented against in this case groundwater, right? And you have to file an insurance claim and your stuff's wrecked or whatever. At least you know that you're getting every dollar back that you spent on the protection system because it ain't gonna happen. It's not happening. It's not gonna happen. But the thing is, anything is possible, and we got to be realistic. And people need to have a risk-free solution, and contractors need to be able to back their installations with their money. And so we do. That's cool, man. People that stand behind their products. I mean, you can't beat that. I had a question about the application. Now, it's a a system for the homeowner to check. Is it all linked in with with you and your you and Jackie system, or is it solely for the homeowner to monitor? It's solely for the homeowner to monitor. We set it up for them or with them, I should say. That way, they know how to do it. Um, but no, there is no network. It is very private. Okay. Now, Liberty Pumps, which is our manufacturer that we use, is out of the States. Okay. And they have a very strict privacy policy. Okay. And the setup is like to make sure that your information that's on that monitoring system stays with you. There is no external network of Liberty Pump owners or myself or anybody else who's watching. Okay. Because you have information like your email, you have uh, your phone number in there and your name, and that's enough for it to be like, okay, this has got to be private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no no alternative network. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, that's super cool because, I mean, I got it like one of those ring cameras. Mm-hmm. Somebody walks in my driveway. I'm always looking. So, you know, it'd be nice to know, you know, in the case that we do go away, you know, you can check that too. Yeah. You know, especially if you know there's a big storm or something coming while you're away and you're like, oh, crap. Yeah, which happens all the time. All the time. Right? We've had storms this spring. We've had storms last fall. You know what I mean? That were huge. Yeah. Summer. That was crazy in July, right? Yeah. And uh, and so, like, they're they're more common, and they're get, becoming more and more common these days. Mm-hmm. And so, it's not going away. Yeah. Like, okay, um, I've been doing what's called a home assessment. That That's our quoting process, okay? So, I like to talk to people on the phone who've called and explain what we do and how much it costs, because it doesn't vary by much. 
Um, and then once they understand what we what we do and what what it would cost them to have the installation installed, then we'll book a home assessment to see if I can solve the problem. Right. Because I'm not going to put one in unless we know we can fix it. Yeah, because then it's a waste for everyone. It's a waste for me too. We have a very good rating yeah. online. Well, that's what I mean for yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't want anybody to to inst- have our system installed. Yeah, just take their money and half ass ha- put yeah. it in, half hazardly put it in, and then it's not you know. No, I don't want that job. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, no. and, they, and they need to maybe hire a waterproofing company, which I'll encourage them to do. Okay. Right? Waterproofing. Sorry, I feel like you're going to ask that next. But <laughs> I was going to ask, <laughs> yeah. and we'll just dive into it because you're already there. So my question would be, and you mentioned it a couple times just earlier, so what differentiates you from, uh, you know, you're a flood protection company, they're a waterproofing company, you know, I've had some exposure to these guys at some listings and some repairs we had to do. Now, what is what sets you guys apart from them or or – would you look at it more as like you complement each other's services in some instances or do people generally pick one or the other? And I guess I'll, I'll leave the floor to you to answer that. Well, I'm still learning, you know, as I go um, with waterproofing companies because they do service, they do all kinds of services, right? They do uh, like, you know, they'll dig up the exterior of your foundation, mm-hmm. install a new drainage system, weeping system, right. we call it. Um, and then they'll put it some sort of waterproofing membrane on the exterior, Right. Um, or they can do it on the interior as well. I don't recommend that from my own experience. It's like a Band-Aid. Right. You want to seal it from the outside if you can afford to. Okay. Um, but what they do um, primarily that separates us, because we're a groundwater flood protection company, and they are a waterproofing company. If you have a waterproofing or crack or something terribly wrong with your foundation um, that needs to be repaired, and you need to have a new you know, either like Delta wrap or membrane installed on your foundation walls. And that, that, that would be their job. Okay. And so whenever I see that at a home assessment, um, cause it's pretty obvious, you see staining, even water, right? Right. Um, I would recommend them to a company that does waterproofing, um, as, as a step into the fo- total holistic flood protection process. Now I'll tell you this though, out of the, I don't even know, like probably 30 home assessments this month so far which we're only the 14th today. We're the 14th. Yeah. yeah. So you know what I mean? Like, and out of those 30, there's only been one or two that need a waterproofing job, right? Yeah. The water just comes in the way you can tell, like the, the definite uh, discerning factor between a, a waterproofing problem and a groundwater problem is where the water infiltrates. Mm. So it's pretty clear. If it's coming up between like your concrete floor and your foundation wall, and it's like on that corner, that's coming up hydrostatic pressure. hydrostatic pressure right and then you got cracks in the floor and you see they're wet hydrostatic pressure you know what i mean yeah so, my neighbor right across the way when we had that big rain and i think i mentioned to you when we had coffee i people from india never been to canada before they showed up i had to put a piece of plywood at my airbnb door there out front because you see how the the driveway kind of the grade goes back into that grate mm-hmm. that grate wasn't able to take on that much water flow so I had to put like a bunch of like little uh, pumps to pump it out. Yep. And like they had to walk over it. And I was like, all right, get in, guys. Like, just like, don't worry. I'll take care of this. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, my God, we thought the weather was good here. In <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, anyway, that day I, I'm going down to get like another hose or something to canter Canadian Tire. And I see my my neighbor right over two doors down. He's shoveling, or, or uh, has a big bucket more so, and he's like pailing, bailing Ugh. water out because he's yeah. got one of those side door accesses on his house, and you kind of got it goes down a set of stairs, yep. and there's a drain. That was just like if you pop the top off of one of those fire hydrants. Oh yeah, it was just... I'm really glad you brought that up because that's something I just learned recently. Okay, there's something about those. They're called basement wells, basement okay. well walkout. Yeah, um, like a window well, but it's a basement walkout well. Right, right. Um, so I was at the home show in uh, Halifax um, with our booth, and uh, uh, one of the Allstate agents came to see me and explained to me that because those walkouts are subterranean, like they're below the grass grade line, Mm -hmm. right? Even though the water is pouring down the stairs and coming in through the door, it's considered groundwater. Oh. So there's there's two major factors of flooding with rain. It's overland water and groundwater, okay? Overland water is what we experience here in 
especially out here in Sackville area. Yeah, uh, everybody, oh my man. God. You could go around the Crescent, everybody <sighs> ripped their basements out. Like that, you should get some cards and do a run. Well, there. that's the thing, right? Like, <laughs> And I'm very honest with people that we cannot solve the overland water problem. Right. Like if that water's coming in through your basement windows and doors. Right. Right? That's uh, that. That's a, you better get a good door and window. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep like, it out. We've got a natural disaster on our hands, right? Yeah. We'll pump the water out faster with our system in place, but yeah. like, but it's not going to prevent that not. from happening. So that's so that's the one thing I learned about it. Their groundwater, and the reason why that matters is because a lot of insurance companies have in their writing um, that you were protected from fire and overland water because that's mm-hmm. a natural disaster, essentially, right? Right. But a lot of insurance companies don't have you written in for groundwater protection. So if you have a flood because it came over the threshold of your basement door, you know, you might not be covered. So it's like a thirty to eighty thousand dollar basement just gone. Ooh. Right. So as a part of our process, because we guarantee against groundwater flooding, if you do have a basement walkout door, we'll encourage you to have us install a new drain. Okay. That goes from that where the old drain was that was tied into your weeping system. And we'll bring it underneath the door threshold under the ground, right? Perforated pipe, collect that water, making that drain useful again, and uh, collect all the groundwater at the door and bring it into our sump basin, okay? And then you're... and then that way we're golden, uh... right? So some people have protested and said, like, ah, like I don't want to bring water into my house. But the thing is, you're right. You don't want to bring water into your house, water that's pouring down the, the stairs. But the groundwater is there. Whether it's outside or it's inside. Yeah, you just okay? can't see it. You just can't see it. So the reason why we do the drain out there is because we want to protect our customers from the insurance claim. Right? It's not that we're, you know, trying to do more work and get more money. It's more like, hey, like we promised no groundwater flooding, and that's gonna be part of that promise. So we have to get that right. that working here. Right? You see what I mean? It's kind of a weird you situation tie it for all me. In. Yeah, like what am I gonna do? Like, like if I if I say you're protected against groundwater now that you have our sump system installed, and you don't tie that, and in then and they flood, then we have a big rainstorm like last July, and it comes down the stairs, the water, and comes over the threshold. They're going to get an insurance claim for groundwater, and then I might guarantee is is has to be processed, right? So, right. And I was going to say in that situation, let's say Mr. Customer or Mrs. Customer doesn't tie that in, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah. So you've got to let it. it go. You can't do it. You can't do it. You... I'll, I'll do the installation still if, if they want me to, but I can't do the guarantee. Right. But the thing is, like, I, I've done a number of installations in houses that have, like, a rock foundation. You know what I mean? Like, like the walls weep. Yeah, water. yeah, yeah. That's just an old foundation thing. And they don't care. They're like, no, no, it's okay. We understand that we can't guarantee against flooding here because we have water coming in through our foundation. We just need something good and reliable. To keep most of to it To keep out. it out, right? Yeah. And most of it out, so... Yeah. What are some of like the objections you've come across with your systems, if you mind me asking? <laughs> so the, the and Jackie, when she's watching this, she'll laugh like the uh, home shows. Um, well, I met like probably 6,000 people. In the yeah, last I month. seen you there. That was a great show. Like actually met, you know, and talked yeah, to for yeah, a moment wow. or said hello. And, uh, and the number one objection that drives Jackie crazy is, oh, I live on a hill. Oh, and, and, and how does that? What, what is it? And like, and I, and I get it, but the thing is, like, the conversation is not about water and draining down, you know, a hill. It's about like groundwater issues, right? Right. Like, like I have on my property in Sherbrooke, my my camp there is on a hill, and our well is on a higher point than our our uh, our actual house is there, right? Mm-hmm. And it's a dug well, and it's twenty, it's like 12, 15 feet deep, full of water, top of a hill. Right, so so people have this misconception if they're on a high point, they're safe. That's right, that, and 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 they are completely right with uh, overland water. It, hey, man, that water's gonna come if they're flooding. The whole city's flooded. You know what I mean? Like yeah. from from overland water. Because if you see here, we're not really a, we're higher than some places in Sackville, and this crescent, like you can tell, it's kind of goes up and around. So it's like a like a U, but it's kind of like on a grade. Mm-hmm. And like you could tell when all that water come, it was like a river. Down, yeah. down my street to the main to the crossroad, and honestly, I put some thought into it. I digress a little bit here, but I noticed my backyard was a little soppy when we moved in like ten years ago, and it was just I did I like a nice yard, and I just didn't want to just like you know stepping in mucky. Yeah, you know, I got two big dogs. It was just going to be a nightmare. So I dug and put a French drain in myself. And like went the length of my backyard on an angle and then diverted it kind of comes out right right over here. And I think that's, you know, being kind of up and things were just kind of passing us by. And I think with that diversion, I was elite, lucky enough 
Knock on wood. Yeah. To uh, not run into any issues except for the water almost coming over the door jam. Yeah. To yeah. my Airbnb. So like like in your situation, so you're Mr. Customer for me, let's say, right? Yeah. You give yeah, me a yeah. call and you say, hey, I don't have any flooding issues, but I'm worried I might have a flooding issue, right? Yeah. So um, this place after that storm didn't flood, you're saying? Right, this house of yours didn't flood. So, Never flooded. No. Okay. Um. So it might seem unreasonable to install a system that uh, is protecting against something you've never experienced before. Well, that's so why I got insurance. You know what I mean? And but the thing is, like, I've been getting not as many as I'd like. I want more prevention installations. You know, I've been doing basically just proactive. like, hey, like reactive. It. I'm getting reactive, reactive. installations. Yeah, sorry, that's a good proactive. way to put it. Actually, I like reactionary. That. So yeah. yeah, reactive installations, not proactive, because like, okay, we're I'm this basement's really nice. Right, it hasn't flooded before, but ninety percent of my customers have never flooded before, and that's the truth. I just don't want to. They just never. I, well, <laughs> yes, I don't want to have a flood, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I made you made it sound like you know I just don't want to, so I'm not gonna. No, no, <laughs> no. I, I meant like to the the points of those customers. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I I want a preventative, so I don't have to like scramble and repair my whole house. No, right? of course. Well, like like we're we're sitting in probably without exaggerating sixty eighty grand worth of stuff right in this basement. So oh, like, wow. and, and the con- including the labor and stuff, cause you're busy. Hmm. So you may be able to do it yourself, but like, yeah. then you got trades in your house for months. Like there's a yeah. seven month turnaround on insurance last year. Cause of the floods, seven months. We did this whole renovation down here and that was including the Airbnb. They started in July mm-hmm. and it took till November. Yeah. And I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. The guys did great work. One of the guys was a bit older They'd show up at seven, you know, kind of drink coffee till eight. And then they'd be gone by three. Yeah. Like we could have been done in September if they worked till five. Yeah. But yeah, no, you know what I mean though? Like it's expensive. It's time consuming. You have to take time off work. Like it's, it's more of a question of like, what are you willing to risk? Your risk may be low because you haven't had a flood before and you've experienced a really big storm and you didn't flood. So, Hey, you might actually be in good shape, but what does it cost? right? To have a flood protection system installed to guarantee you against it, right? Yeah. So we're very open about our pricing. Like things will change as time goes on and inflation seems to be rampant. So, you know, we're yeah. trying to keep our costs low. For sure. So our average installation is around five grand, right? Like $5,000 and you're safe. And you got a guarantee with that and it's risk-free. But so, the, what's the alternative if you don't have it? Maybe your insurance doesn't cover things and you're out 15, 20 grand. Mm-hmm. If you're lucky. Right. right. Yeah. That's yeah. just a very conservative. You like, can't even get somebody in your house for less than twenty thousand. Oh, I know. Like like this this is gonna be seen by a lot of people that uh um have flooded and have spent the money on their basement and they're gonna say, Well, twenty grand, right? Like that it was that was how much it cost me for my flooring. Right. Right. And then like the drywall repairs are another ten, fifteen. Right. Right. And then and then the furniture and all that stuff. It's it's never less than forty grand. Never. Because I don't even know. Would insurance cover? Yeah, I guess they would cover the contents, like in your your furniture and TVs and stuff. It no? dep- I'm pretty sure. I, I, it depends on your company, but like it seems only reasonable. Right. Right. But like like so for five thousand dollars, or I guess we can even give an average of fifty. The, the government of Canada, which I don't know if you can trust their website very well for their averages, but they say an average basement remodel, like bringing it back to what it was after a flood, is forty grand. So if it was 50, let's just say for an, for an average, uh, my system is one tenth of that installation. Right. And it's done in the day, one day, day gone, but 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning. Does I kind of chuckle when you said they got here at seven, uh, ah. we get there at 10, um, and we're out of there by four. Yeah. Right. Sometimes it's four thirty. Sometimes we're there at nine thirty. but we get it done in that window. Right. And, uh, because it's what I do every single day and we're really, really good at it. Yeah. So you got a pretty fast. efficient system. Yeah, fast, professional, clean. I stay with the customer at the end of the job to make sure that they have the app set up, right? Make sure they have any questions or other questions are answered. Make sure the quality is to their to their uh, you know what they want in their basement. Yeah, swept clean. I had a customer say to me, "It's a beautiful basement too. It's cleaner uh, now than when you got here." Right? You know what? <laughs> I'm glad you said that too because. Um... When I used to work for Unilever, I called my business dad, my, my buddy Rick Monroe, who used to be my my direct report before I took over essentially what was his position. And when we go do store visits, he'd always say, like, listen, man, at the end of the day, if you can just leave that store in better condition than what it was than when you walked in, then that's something. Right on. You I know? like that. Even if it was, like, totally, you know, like your job wasn't to clean buddies like basement, 
but you cleaned up your mess and took advantage and did, probably did a couple extra broom sweeps and, mm -hmm. you know, looked better than it was when you walked in. And I think that's a lot of value just there in itself because it shows that you just don't just care about getting your product in there, getting your money and getting out of there. You, you respect, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Customer's home. You clean up and, and you kind of go a little bit beyond, you know, you give that extra mile, you know, and I think that that's a good, uh, good additive and a good, uh, thing to show people is like, you know. yeah, no, I, I, I told, I couldn't agree more. It's just so easy to, to get ahead. Um, you know, like it is honestly, like yeah. just like wear wear good looking, you know, good clean clothes for work. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I try to make sure I'm presentable every day for my customers. Yeah. Answer the damn phone. Oh man. You That's know? <laughs> like a nightmare across every trade. <laughs> Most trades people, realtors, anybody, man. Like my whole thing is like, if you call, I might not get you right away, but I will get back to you that day. Yeah. Within the hour, a couple hours, at least at the bare minimum within the allowable, uh, you know, time frame. It was like, you know, 24 hours or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'd never let it get that long because that's not like quite my standard. But yeah, communication is key. And it's just so amazing to me, the conversations I've had with people on various different walks of life whether it's another realtor a broker a bank specialist a tradesperson mm -hmm. can't get a hold of them yeah or you book them for an appointment but their calendar is actually two weeks out further than yours oh yeah yeah and it's like yeah. always playing like calendar tag yeah we're like oh well it's supposed to be here at 10 today and it's 11 o'clock oh, call yeah. where are they well no answer yeah and then you're hanging around your house hoping somebody's gonna show, show up. up yeah and most times they didn't. Like, I had a roofer. We had a roof leak. We had to get the roof done. He'd give me a time. He'd give me a quote right away. Come, boom, quote. I was like, okay, this guy's probably you know, pretty good. He's already here. Same day. with Quoted me at my house in a couple of hours. Yeah. Like, Perfect. Next thing, he's all right. Well, it's still a little cold, so we're going to wait till you know, heats up a bit. It's better for the shingles, blah, blah. I don't know anything about roofs. It's, it's true. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It sounded true. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, outside of knowing, like, you know, a roof and the, you know, visually looking at the condition and selling them, no real super experience, but, uh, you give me a date that date come. Oh yeah. So-and-so sick. I uh, had to bring them, uh, to, yeah. you know, blah, blah, you know, I have to push it out. And then we pushed it out a few, you know, next week. And then it was like, Oh, well it rained a couple of days. Dangerous. Oh Jesus. Da, da, da. Okay. I was like, okay. okay. All right. And then eventually it was like, you know, got to, th you know, I'll try and give people like three tries and then, by the third one, I was like, yeah, cool. And then, well, my buddy that I was telling you that had all that, like, hydrostatic pressure coming out, his good buddy, um, uh, Mitchell Mattis, uh, Mattis Contracting. Um, my buddy was like, oh, you should have called Mitchell right away. I, You know, didn't I tell you? And anyway, sure enough, I did. And first thing he said, he come to the quote. And he's like, all right, we'll be here this date. I go, cool. Well, the last guy I tried to hire, it was like three weeks trying to reschedule. Yeah. He's like. When we give you a date, we show up. That's, That's it. key, yeah. And they come, and they pounded out this roof in a day. Right on. That's awesome. And they never left till it was and they're done. And they're going to get all the business in town. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. they're not coming at 7, work until 3, going home. Yeah. They come at, like, 7, and they work till, like, 7. Right on. Yep. And when they left, they hooked the dump trailer on and left. Yeah. And that was it. Well, I uh, not to interrupt, but this is my no, no. That was the end of the story. This, this is well, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this is pretty much my my first podcast experience. I mentioned right now, pretty yeah. much it is. Yeah, and I've got to pee. Yeah, so yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, just can we door. do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You man. can leave that in. Pause. Yeah, yeah, we can. We'll cut it out. It's just right that room right there. Oh, sweet, sorry. No worries, I'm man. That's a regular thing. Yeah. Well, I just hit it like a ton of bricks. Yeah, man. No sweat.
<laughs> no, man. Joe Rogan's podcast be- guests have pee all the time. So does he. Yeah. At least they're drinking a bunch of Bud Light or something, right? right. Yeah, 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 right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, to your point, though, um, with the uh, – with the uh, the contractor showing up and getting the job done, and when they said they were going to, right, um, that's critical. So um, it does happen the other way around, though. Okay, with the customer. Oh yeah, oh, I'm not. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't sure, worry. There's plenty of those people too. I'm sure you, especially as an agent, like oh, real estate agent, like oh. you know, it's sometimes it's like, oh well, oh we need a, a CMA done on our, our property. It's like, okay, cool. Uh, when are you available? this date okay perfect i'll come down do some measurements tell me about the house i'll get what i need mm-hmm. i'll go do the 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 cma the comparative report and then we'll rebook and come back and then it's like oh yeah uh we need to move here and then it's like two weeks out and then a month out and then it's like hey like at the end of the day i'm just trying to help you either sell your home and get to the next chapter which it, whether it's an upgrade a downsize, um, maybe you're, you're, you're moving provinces, countries. So like, I'm just trying to provide top notch service to get you to the next chapter. And I'm very transparent and forthcoming with how and what I'm going to do to get you there. So at the end of the day, maybe you just have to move that appointment. But for some people, it's like, if you really just don't want me to come, Mm-hmm. just tell me yeah it's way better for everybody like trust me i have plenty other people that need my attention if you don't want mine that's okay yeah just tell me don't string me along don't make up like random stories about why like i don't care Re- i mean i do I don't want to you know get caught on the wrong foot here but it's like if you just don't we need my service i'm not going to cry about it it's like, okay, on to the next one. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you revisit and you decide you do need me a few months down the road. Awesome. I'll be there. But like for me, openness, communication, honesty, and just being somebody that people can rely on and trust. Mm-hmm. And like the biggest feedback for me, because I don't provide so much of a product as of my service, is like, oh, we, we really feel like we can trust you. Like we really feel like you're listening to to our grievances or the issues and you know we feel like you're always working in that in our best interest and for me as a realtor which you know i hate to say it but we're kind of looked at a little bit above used car salesmen for some of us like to be told that i am trustworthy to my people i mean if i ever only got that compliment that'd be enough for me right on because i mean you're you're buying or selling the biggest asset you probably ever owned and will own so if you can trust me through that process, well, that's all I need. Well, that's why like I like your social media uh, media quite a bit. Um, you do portray like a level of competence that I don't see in a lot of other agents. Well, I appreciate um, that's that. That's a big thing, and I like your I like your um, uh, work with Sports Wheels. Yeah, yeah, I My really buddy do. Jeff, yeah, yeah it's awesome. I love Jeff. With Ryan Keeping there and his big journey. Yeah, man. Big yeah. shout out to Ryan Keeping. Um, yeah, man. We 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 donated what we could afford to him. Yeah. Um and. Uh, and you know, I'm doing something stupid too right now. I uh, it's not stupid, I guess, but I uh, I'm kind of I'm t- I've taken three months off of alcohol for fun uh, with him in his journey. So he started on April 1st, and I'm going to the July 9th there. And it's not like I have a problem or anything like that, but like I just kind of compared it jokingly on social media with Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Like I know you're running across Canada, but I'm not drinking tonight. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty hey, much man. the same thing. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned it, and you know what? <laughs> Not drinking and being part of that whole, like, we got to go out and drink on Friday culture or like, it's the weekend, let's go get blackout. Like, you know, I grew up with friends that that's like all we did from maybe even from Thursday through the weekend. And, you know, I partied my fair share, like through university in my 20s, trickled into my earlier 30s. But like, man, I've met more people my age, older, even some younger people that aren't into it which is you know surprising for some of that generation right um people are just getting away from it i hope so and i you know the thing that struck me and i think about it every so often my wife is a sweetheart uh she doesn't drink very much outside she likes to have she likes red wine but like she's like a glass of wine like if we open a bottle it either takes us two days to drink it or i have to drink the whole 
rest of whatever she doesn't drink in a night. I, I don't understand this. You have to explain it to me. What's that? <laughs> if you open a bottle of wine, it's gone. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we were talking one day, and she's like, you know, when we first met Chris, the only reason I went out and drank was like so I could like hang out with you. Ah, uh, yeah. And that, I was happy that she felt like she wanted to come hang out with me, but I felt bad in the sense where I was making her kind of do something that she wasn't really into. Right. And that was very early on in our relationship. And I've only since like, since I guess like uh, the last five years or so, I think I've, I've leaps and bounds in terms of maturity, Mm -hmm. especially, you know, running my own business, starting the real estate thing. I just started like taking stock of stuff like that. And the wasted days hung over on the couch and I like to do a lot of stuff. Like I like to run. I like to do jujitsu. I like to go hiking, walk my dogs, hang out with my wife. Yeah. And like, and she never ever like guilted me or made me feel bad about it because she'd be like, "Oh yeah, well you know you don't you don't go out all the time, so you know just you know that's yeah. okay." Or like you know, vet like very like didn't bother her. I'd be like, oh, "I'm too hungover. Can you just walk the dogs? I'm just gonna right be useless on the couch." And like. Then I took stock of how often that was kind of happening. Not like I said, not like I had a problem, but, you know, even the every weekend, every other weekend. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, she's coming out maybe to, if we go to a party, but she's leaving by 9, 30, 10, maybe 11. Right. And I'm like, then I'd be out and I'd be late and be like, what am I even here for? Yeah, you're, you're, you're explaining exactly my life with what? my wife. Yeah, same thing. So now, let's, don't be wrong, I'm, <laughs> I'm not totally out. Yeah. But the amount of times I've had an alcoholic beverage from, we'll just say from New Year's to today, like I had one beer at dinner on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And then I think I've had two other beers. So like maybe three. Wow. So I've been like really trying to like, I mean, don't be wrong. I'm not going to be a straight, I smoke pot. Yeah. I tend to like that more. Yeah. Uh, Works better for me. I find that a lot too. There seems to be a, a big trade, right? Some people, uh, um, who people who smoke uh, weed or whatever, mm-hmm. they don't tend to drink that much. Uh, they, they, as long as they have something that, and they could choose the better of the two, which it's I would agree vice. is yeah. is the weed, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like like I like we are very akin, okay? Um, like we're around the same age, we like the same kind of stuff, mm-hmm. right? We have similar spouses, Made in some a sense, similar realizations. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and uh, I, I think we're uh, uh, we're on the same page there because like Jackie, same thing. Um, like Jackie barely drank. Like she, she, she says she partied in her twenties, but I Caitlin think too. But I think it's cute when she says that yeah, because, me too. like, when I partied in my twenties, if any of my friends see this, they'll understand. Um, you yeah, know, trust like, trust me, mine too. Yeah, and for like, the ones that are still around that I haven't, you know, unfortunately had to, you know, you grow up. Some people don't stick around. One hundred percent. That's okay. Yeah, that right. Okay. It's not the end of a bad or a bad friendship. It's the end of a bad friendship, right? Yeah. It's key. Right? Yeah. You don't want to have that friendship. But anyways, um, with Jackie, she uh, uh, we would have every weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, drinking. Oh, trust and me, she, man. She, yeah, she, she didn't. She never really drank, right? No. So um, when Jake was born, my son, um, he uh, uh, Jackie decided obviously during pregnancy she stopped drinking. So she just pretty much stopped since then. That's four years ago now. It's poison. She doesn't care. It's literally poison. No, there's a beer or two. In the fr- I, went and bu- I went and bought uh, Oast. I don't know if anybody knows uh, Oast House, um, which is a, uh, a brewery in, in Niagara. It's a very big brewery there, but obviously they're not out here. So anyways, they have this really good beer that Jackie loves. Like even if she doesn't matter if it had alcohol in it or not, right? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. really good stuff. So I got her a flat of it, which is 24 cans, right? Tall cans. And brought it back when I was in Ontario for a visit. And she was here. And she's like, oh, awesome. This is great. Right? I drank every single one of those beers. Yeah. She didn't even touch Over them. the period that they were sitting in the in the closet or whatever. Right? I didn't touch them. Man, I have a two, four. I had a, <laughs> well, you'll have to come this year because we were acquainted now. But I had a Christmas party uh, last December. Yeah. And uh, we had it at the office. I hired my buddy. He's an awesome bartender. It's music. We got a pool table there. Everybody had a good time. Anyway, point of the story is I have a two four a Bud Light that like somebody ripped open. I think they maybe took one so I couldn't return it. And like I put three beer because every once in a while, like doing hot, you know, yard work out in a hot day, like I still like a beer. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against it. I'm not against anybody that drinks. Maybe if you drink excessively, you should reevaluate right. the, the consumption. 
amount. But that two four is literally upstairs, hasn't moved. Come on. And the three beer are still in my fridge. Oh, that'd be so gone in my house. <laughs> and uh, the thing with me though, and it's probably from my childhood, um, I always feel like I got a drink out of the house. Yeah, hey. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. No, I I, yeah. I, I can see that. Yeah. I don't know why. It's just like because for me it was like you know, and the thing that I have a hard time getting away from from the drinking piece, it's like realtors love to drink. Oh, do and, they? And, well, not yeah, trades. Man, trades they, been drinking. Well, the yeah. trades drink too. <laughs> yeah. But man, it's like any you know, work hard, play hard. And don't get me wrong, I like having fun too. But my fun now is like, you want to go out and have a sub- celebratory dinner? Maybe I'll have a pint or two. And then when Caitlin says she wants to go home, I'm going home with her. Yeah, I'm. I'm learning to love that. It's like that. I'm approaching forty years old, so I that is that. This seems to be kind of synonymous with the age, you know. Like, yeah, man. Like, I want to come home after great. I'm full with yeah. good conversation, maybe a couple drinks, maybe not, depending on how I feel. And I love the one thing I love to do is just come home. You know, get in your PJs or whatever you like, your lounge clothes, mm-hmm. watch a movie, mm-hmm. make something. Not to eat. right. I like that. I'm yeah, enjoying yeah. cooking now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love cooking. Yeah. Yeah, we could do a whole other episode on that. No, I know, like, like that. That is the best. And like, I have a. And as you get older, I think too, like your your home gets a little better, right? Yeah. Like when I was twenty, compared to now, my home is much better. Right. Um, well, obviously. when you're twenty, your home was just a place to sleep. Exactly. Now it's a home. So now I got like my bathtub. I like that bathtub. You know, I got my sauna in the backyard yeah, that man. we're building. So going out and building the sauna sounds like more fun to me than going out and getting drunk right now. You know, hundred percent. And so stuff like that, and also like the um, uh, fitness lifestyle for me is relatively new. But I wanted to go back to what you're saying earlier about how it um, uh, lifestyle. Like you are, you know, like to walk the dogs, your yeah. jiu-jitsu, all this kind of stuff. But you still drank, right? And Jackie would say to me because I used to smoke cigarettes too, and she's like, "This doesn't I had fit." A period in my life, I did. This as doesn't well. fit your lifestyle. You know, like, like w- this is in the way. Why are you doing this? Right. As if it's a decision. Like Jackie apparently has like, and pretty much true. She doesn't really have any addictions. So like, you know, no, no nicotine addiction, no pot. Caitlin, and, none either. Right. Doesn't so, smoke pot, barely drinks, yeah. nothing. She's th- just like so happy and just content with life. Yeah. It's almost like I'm so like, I'm happy that she's that way, but it's almost and not that I'm miserable or anything, but it's like. I wish I could just be a fraction of like her because it's like it's almost annoying how like uh, like she's just upbeat and everything's positive and even a shitty day is still like the a uh, way better than my good day. Like, yeah, not yeah. way better than my good days, but way better than like my regular days. Right, right. Yeah, my you dad know. was like that. my dad's like that too. He's upbeat, very, very, oh, he's very yeah. upbeat guy, yeah. and uh, he's great to be around. Yeah, man, I like it because like you know there's enough negativity out there. It's nice having positive people like that. Yeah, but man. the lifestyle thing though, like that doesn't really fit into my lifestyle. And so, um, you know, since then I quit smoking and, uh, and I'm not really sure where I'm going to end up with alcohol. Um, cause I, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's just what it is. I like taking the break and, and Ryan, um, is an inspiration. I know it sounds like nothing. And I jokingly say like, well, I'm going to quit drinking, you know, it's which not is nothing, you know, whatever. But like, uh, I, I love, uh, the idea that Ryan inspired me to do it without even inspiring me to do it. He's just, he's doing something really hard and cool. Yeah, man. And, uh, and so it's like, you know, I want to do something hard and cool with him for me. Right. Like, yeah. like and, and, and just I'm little step, just something like that. Right. So anyways, just to kind of cap that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, man, absolutely. And I don't think you should downplay that at all. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, and the, one of the main reasons I've cut back so much is like, you know, I ran an ultra marathon. I still train jujitsu. I still want to have energy to walk the dogs and like talk to my wife and do stuff with her. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, being hung over on the couch, like being a slug or whatever, just like it's not conducive. And if and now if I don't feel good enough to do my activities, then it kind of generates additional anxiety around not being able to do them. And then I feel like I'm letting myself down. And there's just like this like negative yeah. feedback loop. It's yeah. like, oh, you're a piece of shit. You yeah, drink too yeah. much. Can't do your stuff. Or you're not going to get better at it in the in the in at the speed that you want or whatever. So just like I had to get rid of that. Yeah. And like, and that's why uh, you don't have as good a days as Caitlin does is because you're not going to let yourself. Not that she does. I'm not saying she lets herself get away with anything. But you're not going to let yourself get away with it. Right. You were supposed to do this. You said you were going to do it. Yeah. And you didn't do it. Yeah. Now the one who's going to pay for that the most is you, right? Mentally. And, yeah. uh, and so I'm the same way too. Like I, I just, I have a book I'm reading right now, but the book's getting really boring. Yeah. 
and I won't mention the book, but cause a lot, a lot of people love it, but like, uh, and it's getting really boring. And I'm just like, I, I told myself I get through this book cause it's important. Some parts. And I'm just like, it's just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, I haven't read in three it. days, but I'll get there. Cause I know yeah, like man. I'm bummed out in the morning. I'm like, this, I wake up early to get my, most of my office stuff done in the morning. And one of the things I wanted to do in the morning was read this damn book. And yeah. I didn't this morning again, it's the third day in a row. I was like, shit. Anyways, just to go to show, like, you're, you're your own worst enemy sometimes, right? Like, Yeah, man. It's, like, not like you're going to, you know, you have a goal list daily, weekly, monthly. It's, like, you know what? It's pretty normal for pro- for you to probably not get it all. But if you get, like, 90%, like, you still should still feel pretty good about yourself. And I'm glad you mentioned about, like, reading and not or, like, you know, anxiety. I've read a lot of, like, I've been into, like, modern-day stoicism. So, like, Marcus Aurelius. um, Roman emperor used to write all his thoughts and stuff down in a journal and Ryan holiday since like repurposed all that and several other offers, but authors, sorry. Um, not to be confused with hundred million dollar offers. Best book. <laughs> right. <laughs> it is. Um, should read it. It's called obstacles the way. And essentially Ryan holiday is the author. And he, he says like a lot of the anxiety that we feel day to day comes from things that we've told ourselves we were going to do and we're not actually doing them Hmm. you want to read that book didn't read the book yeah now you're beating yourself up over it oh man you want you want to do that workout oh you didn't do it or maybe you went it was supposed to be leg day but you did arms i know right yeah or that might have happened today right hey (laughs) uh, (laughs) every arms day is a pretty good day anyway yeah but no like the the cold is a good one for that because the cold will make make you weak pretty quick yeah man you're like oh like once you i'm gonna cold plunge or something like that or cold shower yeah you see it and you're ready to do it and it's like oh i don't i'm not gonna do it today we used to go i haven't (laughs) went recently but my buddy mark uh also from jujitsu large jujitsu references yeah a big that. part of my life uh he's got a little pop-up sauna in his yard and he's got like one of those cold plunge like just like i think it was a uh, aluminum like food trough like for farms and shit mm-hmm. and like man we'd go there in the evenings in the winter so like it's pitch black you know he's got a few like lights and stuff and it's lit up in the tent and uh Man, I remember the first time he set that up and invited us over. A bunch of us went over, and he's like, okay, who wants to go cold plunge? And we got out there, steaming, it's cold. And it's like this friggin' aluminum tank. It's dark, so it's even more intimidating because right. it's dark. And then we had to, like, smash out, like, you know, this much ice with a sledgehammer. Oh, yeah. And oh, you're dude. looking at that thing like it's going to just, like, eat you alive. And then you get in there, and it's like, <gasps> you can't breathe. And then you, <sighs> yeah. you settle in. And you just kind of embrace the suck. Right. Yeah. And you guess get through it. And I always try and do three minutes because apparently that's like the the max before like you kind of get diminishing returns or, or, you know, I know people like one girl stayed in there long enough. We were in the sauna. We had to yell to see if she was alive. Oh, God. She was like in there for 10 minutes. Wow. So after the three mark, I think it's like bragging rights and then possibly hypothermia. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you're not really getting anywhere anymore. Right? Yeah. So I do the three, and even if I can't sometimes, which I'm pretty stubborn, I usually do, I try and stay in at least for a minute. And then, you know, me and my wife go to the Sensei Spa. Have you guys ever been there? Yeah, we're going to go soon. Oh, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Yeah. The favorite. It is, eh? We try and go once a quarter. I've been hearing that like crazy from my friends. Yeah. Well, it's just like zen out. you Caitlin likes to chat a little bit, and sometimes she'll, like, and I love talking with my wife, but sometimes we're there, and she's, like, talking. I'm, like, shh. Like, it's. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's like the sauna. I'm sure you've, I'm not sure if you've, uh, uh, if your gym um, has a sauna in it or not. Does it? Uh, Our jiu-jitsu gym doesn't, but I have one right here. Right, of course. Okay, so you wouldn't experience this then. Like, uh, at The Good Life, where I go um they uh they have a sauna and it's become very popular thanks andrew huberman right um Damn but you. yeah i know right and Rhonda, <laughs> dr Rhonda patrick yeah. too her and too joe so. rogan's probably responsible yeah for i know it. well she told joe about the heat chop proteins. oh god yeah the heat chop proteins, proteins. damn straight the yeah. only person's ever mentioned it so all he talks about. i got all these weekend warriors in there with me now and oh the yeah sauna is just full of these guys right and they're yapping and yapping and yapping you know and so uh, sometimes I'll talk with them, you know, or maybe I might even initiate the conversation a couple of times here and there. But like the sauna is supposed to be my like, hey, Me- meditative. I need to deal with what's going on today or the last couple of days. And the best way to deal with that was with controlled inver- adversity. Yeah. Not talking to you about your cat. Right. Yeah. So I'm not a big fan of talking in the sauna. Me so neither. earbuds in, even yeah. though they get destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. There. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I know that the, the conversation in the sauna um, is I think Ron, it was even saying that um the uh the conversation in the sauna is like a side effect of being uncomfortable 
oh yeah, you have to distract yourself. And your distraction, right? So, yeah. and I and I believe that's true. So I'm not really giving anybody a hard time about it. It's just kind of like. I should, you know, put my earbuds in and go in the corner and just say, I'm not, yeah, I don't yeah, want to talk yeah. to anybody right now. Right. So I used to go to the tower. Now it's called Smew Fit, the university gym at St. Mary's where I went to school. I love, uh, even more than a sauna. I like a steam room mm. and the, you know, we used to go in there all the time for like 20 minutes after workouts. And I loved it. Cause we'd steam that place so far. <laughs> so up that. You're sitting over. I couldn't see you, right? On. So I'm not even going to talk. Like you know, yeah. You'd see people come in and be like a wish of like steam, and you'd see a body pass by and sit where they could. Yeah. And that everybody just kind of was like, they knew the assignment. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. And for me, it's like you know, do you meditate at all? Um, I uh, yeah, I have a form of it I do before bed right now. Yeah. But I like I just have a hard time saying yes because I'm not consistent enough yet. You know. Yeah, well, I'm a spotty meditator and journal journaler, but I've been pretty cons- consistent. But I find like I like to meditate in the sauna if I do it, because mm. it kind of takes some of the thought away from like, holy shit, it's super hot in here, and then you know you kind of focus on being present and just kind of breathe through it. But I really like uh, if if you find like I need to be guided a bit. I'm not like I'm not that far into it. I use the Headspace app mm. and I find it's super good. They also have like, I like to listen to like sleep casts. So like, it'd be like a uh, monastery drizzle, like rainstorm or mm. whatever, or like, uh, you know, heavy, heavy cabin downpour, or there'd be like fire crackling. And I like to, and my wife even like, she'll ask me to put it on sometimes. And, you know, maybe not every night, but maybe every other night mm-hmm. and you kind of just like drift off and then, you know, maybe your mind's racing, but like you can just focus on the sound. Isn't of the it water. great? It's yeah. Perfect. Yeah. No, I, I discovered that uh, a long time ago with YouTube videos because they had like, you know, thunderstorms for yeah. six hours yeah. or whatever before they had ads like a long time ago. Right. And, uh, and you could just transport somewhere else for a minute. It yeah, helps man. you so much with that. Right. So that's why I'm a spotty med- meditator. That's a, way, well, a good way to say it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, like the, the journal thing, though, I do that every day. Do you? Yeah, I don't do a gratitude journal. I do uh, basically like, hey, this is what's going on today. Um, really happy about this, kind of bummed about that. Let's see if we can work on this, right? Well, that's pretty similar. And I guess, yeah, like, like I think the gratitude one would be very helpful, though, because it lets you remember, hey, this is actually pretty awesome. And I don't want to miss this time in my life, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, because I'm too, so driven towards my business. Yeah. Right? Like we, like you we we have to get our voices heard and yeah. so we have to do a lot of work to get our name out there right and uh we had to do a damn good job for a lot of different people at the same time yes sir and we also have the our families at home like and uh that we have to take care of mm-hmm. and uh and all of the other maintenance in life too so they got a lot going on right and so it's important to remember that hey like you, you when you're 56 because i'm 36 right now I, all i'll ever want in the whole world is to be 36 again Right. Just to feel that way, right? Of like, course. Because it's, it's easy to let that go. So that brings me back to, I wanted to say that Alex Hermosi thing again. One more thing about him. I talked about it too much. But he does talk to his 80-year-old self. Have you ever heard of that before? Yes, yes. So he does an email back and forth, which is just to him, obviously, right? But like he says, hey, I'm having this problem right now. What should I do? And then his, and then he'll pretend he's his 80-year-old self giving, giving, I trust you. You'll do the right thing. I'm happy. You know what to do. Right. Yeah, and the reason yeah, why it does, yeah. it's a really interesting kind of way to play with like decision making problems, you know, or like, you know, maybe realizing that like if you zoom out far enough away from the world, you can't even see it in the right. universe. Like your problems aren't that big. Yeah. Maybe, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We think they are, though. Yeah. And so he's like, well, if you were to talk to your 80 year old self, what would they say what you should do today? Right. Yeah, man. That kind of reminds me. I had a conversation on uh, just released his episode. Uh, my buddy Dave Rafuse from Blended Athletics. And we were talking a lot about training health and like aging mm-hmm. along with uh you know because that's part of our li- everybody's life mm-hmm. guess what tomorrow you're going to be older than you are today and we're all eventually going to get old and die mm-hmm. and you know one thing for him he said now i think he's a bit older i, I won't say he's our age because i'm not 100 percent. but like we said you're 35 i'm 35 you're 36 i think he's maybe closer to 40 um, and he says, like, you know, back when he was young, very much like me, um, you know, just want to be bigger, faster, stronger, you know, whatever the path to that was perfect, whether it was like beat my body to pieces or whatever it took to get there. Now it's like, 
how do I train so that I can, like you said, want to, going to want to have to, going to want to be this age, you know, when I'm older. Mm -hmm. So how can I train to extend this active, you know, lifestyle that I have into my senior years. Yeah, and because the wheels are going to fall off our bodies. Yeah, you know I mean? or like, the we, tires are going to bust. Or, you know, you know what? You're going to get a crack in the rim. Yeah. How do you kind of, you know, fix that up so you can get some more longevity out of your like, life? Like, I'm 5'7", you know? and I've got terrible back pain. Yeah. You know what I mean? My, I understand if you're tall and knee pain and stuff like that. But me, I'm like, what? What are you talking? What's this back pain? It's all brand new for me, right? Mm. That's okay. It's just another challenge, you know. I'm not. I'm not gonna, um, you know, abuse myself as hard at the gym and stuff like that or yeah. at work. Just take it a little easier, you know. Adjust. Um, but like whatever I can do to make myself better every day, like like I, I I will do it, and I and I and I trust myself that I will. Um, and including you know taking breaks off of alcohol, maybe indefinitely. I'm not even sure yet. It might be over. You know? Yeah, man. Stuff I like mean, that. I had one beer for dinner, and I you know. And when you don't drink for a while and then you drink, I find you notice how it makes you physically feel a bit more. And I, I had that beer and I was like, hmm, I kind of like what it's doing up here, but I, I don't know if I'm into like, it's kind of turns my guts upside down. Mind yeah. you, I, I drank a Sapporo, which I hadn't had in a while. So maybe it's that. I'm a Coors Light guy or Bud Light. Or yeah, whatever, yeah. Yeah. Keep her light. Yeah. Yeah. No, the alcohol thing is a weird one. I just, it's, it's been a, it's built into my life. So like my family's, uh, uh comes from uh, Irish and English immigrants. Yeah. And, uh, I might as well be Irish and, you know, they're from the South shore. They drink like fish. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. But like, like there, it's just, you know, you go to the doctor when you need to, but if you're, if you're in pain, you just drink a couple of beers. Yeah. You know, like it's self, self-medicating stuff. Right. Yeah. And all the power to, honestly, that's not even a slight. It's just what it was. Right. Like back, yeah, man. back 40, 50 years ago, that was what was common. Um, but it's no excuse for me in 2024 to still be doing that kind of stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, because you know people back then didn't know what they didn't know. Right now, there's unlimited amount of information, and you know you can you can get some help instead of you know masking it with other stuff. And you know I do have some experience with that in my childhood and upbringing as well. And and you know fishermen's got a lot of aches and pains. Oh God! And you know they're gone for a lot of hours, yeah. and unfortunately, one of the first things they like to do when they get home is. I want to say probably hopefully say hi to their wife and have supper and something to eat, but yeah, know, probably in conjunction there's some beers or some liquor. Oh yeah, and I yeah I can't even blame them. I I have zero experience commercial fishing, obviously from being yeah. from Ontario. Like there yeah. is, I'm sure there's some, but not really anything prominent. But yeah. I met a lot of like a lot of my customers are fishermen. Yeah, man, and it's it's cool. I got a lot of respect for fishermen. Like yeah, it's a tough job, man. Dad did that his whole life. Retired, sold the business. I I always thought I might get into it, but. I see, you know, seeing his retirement, you know, he's, you know, finally in a good spot. He's getting some, you know, to your point, like not going to the doctor. He needs new, he's finally got one new knee. I think mm -hmm. he needs another one. His shoulder's all messed up. And that was just from like exactly like you said. Just didn't go to the doctor. Yeah. Had a couple of drinks. Oh, yeah. Probably numb the pain. Yeah. And now it's so exacerbated because of age. Yeah. And, you know, the, the beating he put on himself out pounding around that boat. Yeah. That now he has to get through some of that stuff, and it's not stuff that he's accustomed to go getting through. Even right. just seeing the doctor, and it's uh, I can see that it's been a challenge. And it, like we're talking about longevity, love my old man, but I can't get to where he's at at sixty one. Like I want to be whooping ass in yeah. my jujitsu gym at into my seventies, and yeah. these kids being like. Who the fuck is this dinosaur? Yeah, like barring any like crazy thing you can't control, I totally believe you yeah. will be. Yeah, I believe you will be. Thanks, yeah. man. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, I'm I'm gonna be right there with you. Yeah, man. But no, like we'll I will be there together. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I am. Uh, Jaker's very interested. My son Jaker. Uh, yeah, in, you're in telling me. Yeah. He's how old? He's uh, gonna be four in August. Yeah, they're little kids' class, man. Yeah, Get he him in there. he did the judo courses at first. Did our he? classes there? Um, because I, I we thought that that was the only martial art. That would allow such young kids until I talk to you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now Joel and Josh are super now, into that. I I want to start too. Do it. Can I? I know I've heard people say, "Oh, you can do it any age." You know, whatever. Was that the truth though? Like, can somebody as old as me? Yeah, start? man. We yeah. got a bunch of like my. Funny enough, I reconnected with my old. Was it old managerial? Anyway, my old university professor Scott McMillan. Mm -hmm. He must be in his mid sixties. He's a savage. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. No easy rounds with him. Right Don't on. Don't think even at, you know, our age, younger, he doesn't care. 
Come on. Awesome. Savage. There's a bunch of old guys there. There's guys in their 40s. There's guys in their 50s. There's guys in their 60s. Man, we got a few, you know, few uh, black belts that are that are older in their in their mid forties, and don't think they won't kick your ass. Oh yeah. Oh, buddy. No, I just I asked about the starting point though. Is it okay to start later? Yeah, yeah man, we got a bunch of guys. Just uh, my buddy Kevin LePage. He's pretty new. He's an, a bit older fella. I think he's in his forties. Um, he's progressing along nicely. It's just uh, you know you just gotta take it for what it is. Everybody starts different things at different times and. Yeah, did I wish I would have started in my 20s and been a black belt and maybe like an accomplished, you know, competitor? Uh, am I happy being, you know, a pretty good training partner, decent jiu-jitsu guy, and just training and feeling good and, and moving my body? Yeah, it's just all in what you want to look at it and how you want to use it. It's like, to me, I used to be in it, I want to compete, 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 want to be the best world champion. Now, that's just how my... For some reason, when I was young, that's just how my mind's well, wired. Well, that got you to be a successful powerlifter, though. Right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I did win powerlifting nationals. That is true. Yeah, I think I saw a video of you on. I was doing some research. Is there one of you doing seven hundred pounds? Yeah, yeah. I saw that. I'll yeah. send you the. I'll see if I can find it. I got my just my original YouTube page that I only posted like my national kind of little real video, but I got that and a few. When I was in that scene, I was like, I'm gonna be, you know. Back before influencers were influencers or whatever you wanted to call them, but yeah, I thought that my bodybuilding powerlifting was going to be my stardom or like my yeah 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 the way to fame. But I tore my quad and that was kind of I was like this oh, is God. this isn't sustainable. Oh, I tore your quad. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, no surgery is oh. a minor, but yeah, it was enough to get me out of uh, the second year, 2015 nationals. I won in 14. 50. I still went and did push pull, so I bench and deadlift, and I still won, but I had torn quad. So you got like that kind of killer instinct, eh? <sighs> yeah, for better or worse. Yeah, like, yeah. I'll but get there. You seem to be in control though, which is good for everybody yeah. else out there. Well, <laughs> I try. I mean, I'm not perfect, and uh, you know, the meditation, the journaling, the you know, all the things that I do, the jujitsu too is a very humbling and 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 very grounding experience, and um, it's a great community too. Like. You know, especially for dads, um, you know, because we don't, you know, we don't have like as much, I don't think, support as maybe like moms and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of new dads, a uh, lot of really great, super supportive dads that are super into being dads. And uh, it's very much rubbed off on me. No kids, but uh, who knows, mm -hmm. you know, what happens. But yeah, man, I think anytime and if you feel like you need somebody to be there like i can come do an intro class like we'll partner up um you know and go through it and then yep. you can kind of pick away at it from there that, that that would be something i'd be very interested in yeah having some help from you on that yeah man. It's, it's like i don't care who you are if you walk into any kind of dojo it's intimidating it, you're gonna be like you're you're with killers around you you're gonna be yeah. like, like well that gotta... was my opinion right away yeah. when i joined same yeah. thing so it would be nice to have some sort of introduction i like to pretend i'm tougher than i am yeah. I'm not. We all so we all pretend. <laughs> yeah. We all pretend. I ain't that tough, no. Yeah, man. But no, anyways, uh Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I think this is a great place to kind of close her off. It's been super fun, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's great conversation. I mean, I knew we were gonna have a good chat when we sat down for coffee. Uh I love your product. I love that you're kind of following the same kind of guidelines and kind of direction in life as me and uh, i think it's all about making these connections with like-minded people with with the similar goals and uh, similar values and uh, i'd love to have you on again another day when we got uh, something new to talk about oh for sure like i yeah it was it's it's so nice to be able to sit and talk to somebody without my phone right we didn't look at it once you know what i mean I, i'm not gonna like it, it's like it's i heard rogan mention that a bunch and i'm like oh, i'm really excited to do a podcast one day but who the hell wants to talk to me Apparently you do. Yeah, man. So I thank I thank you very much for that. Yeah, you're so. very welcome. It was a pleasure, and uh, hope you uh, seize the day. And yeah, yeah. No, we'll be back again. Let's get training. Yes, sir. All right, my man. Right. Have a good one. Yeah, you too.